up guys, my name is Tay or Tion Tay and I'm going to be talking about a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for some time now but I just haven't had the chance to do it. Um, as you guys know, I've been in the tech industry for 7-8 years now, specifically in the cybersecurity industry. And over the last few months or even say a year, I've been noticing like a lot of people want to make a career transition into the tech industry. And while I am an advocate of people making that transition because I feel like there's something to do for everyone in the tech industry, whether you're recruiting, sales, software engineer, or cybersecurity, there's something for everyone to do. But I briefly want to hear and talk about the reality of what it is to be a security engineer in the tech industry. And kind of start off, uh, being in cybersecurity is, especially as a security engineer, it's extremely hard, like for one, being a security engineer, you have to know all of the domains in tech. So you have to know six administration, you have to know cloud security, you have to know application security, you have to know what the network engineers are doing. You have to know all these different domains just to be able to be competitive in this market. And, um, and not to say any other um, particular positions or roles in the tech industry isn't the same, but because you're in security, you need to know how to secure these things. You have to know how to, you have to understand all of these different technologies you have to understand all these different concepts and that can be extremely draining when you're trying to prep and learn these different things like you if you can't secure network communications or you can't secure firewalls if you can't secure all these things that allow traffic to come in and out of the network it's like okay like you need to know this stuff <laughs> and i don't think when people try to make the transition to cybersecurity. I don't think they really realize what they're getting themselves into. They see the high salaries, they see, you know, everyone talk about, hey, I'm getting paid $140,000, $150,000 per year to do all this stuff. But while cybersecurity or security engineer jobs can be relaxed at times, it can definitely get super stressful. You're constantly on call. If an attack happened or an incident happened, you're gonna be one that called at two or three o'clock in the morning. And you know, on the internet, these people, they typically don't talk about these things, but these things actually happen. It's happened to me quite a few times and sometimes it can be draining. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is the continuous learning in this industry. I And this is actually why I love it. This for the simple fact of, I know I'm gonna always be learning. I'm gonna always have a different skill set. I'm gonna always be learning new things. I'm never gonna be lagging behind when it comes to technical skills. But for someone that's just getting into the industry, just for the money, you're not going to succeed in this industry. Uh, just for the simple fact of, there's always new emerging threats, always something new that comes out. You have to be continuously learning. You have to be looking at blogs. You have to read cyber cyber news. You have to actually be interested in stuff because the thing is, like say for instance, if there has been this new attack or vulnerability, and you guys have those systems in your particular infrastructure. You know, you need to be, hey guys, like, you know, I was reading this blog and I saw that, you know, this new vulnerability is out and I noticed we have these systems already protected. Like, it, it requires a lot of proactiveness versus reactiveness to actually be good in your job. And for the people that just kind of want to come in this industry just for the money, it's not going to work out well for you because employers are going to notice the quality of work that you're doing. They're going to notice, they're going to notice all of that. You Like, cybersecurity is kind of one of those fields that you cannot just play around and just kind of like bop by. You actually, actually have to be interested and you have to be engaged when you're working with other co-workers and you're working with other people within it, um, within your team. And a lot of people don't talk about that as well too. <laughs> so yeah, that's a major one. Like the continuous learning is definitely major when it comes to this particular um, field. Next thing is up. Like when you think about like security engineering and you think about software engineering, there are way more resources for software engineers versus security engineers. And for all of my security engineers, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like when it comes to software engineers, you have Leak Code, you have Algo Expert, you have all these different websites that can help you prep for uh, interview. Cybersecurity or security engineering, we don't necessarily have that. We have like pretty much random fundamental questions that is going to be asked in the interview, but most of the time, well, at least from my perspective of how I've been interviewing lately, they don't really ask you these questions anymore. They ask you for your experience, like, hey, give me your experience with this, or tell me about this. I see you have this on your resume. It's more so digging into your experience, but then recently I've really noticed that you're actually doing scenarios, you're actually doing labs, you're doing all these different things, 
and you really don't know what to kind of ask for whenever you're interviewing like say for instance when it comes to Google, everyone knows you're going to get lead code questions. You're probably going to get lead code medium, hard, whatever. You know what to expect. So you can literally go to the lead code and you can just grind out and memorize those lead code answers and just really grind out and really study. Cybersecurity as a security engineer, we don't have anything like that. I mean, sometimes, yeah, we do have to do some lead coding or we have to do architecture design. And then this brings to another point, like we, because we don't also have that, we really never know what to expect in the interview until maybe our recruiter tell us if we tell it. Like there was a time I had to do threat modeling, I had to do an architecture design, I had to kind of go in and see what was wrong with the architecture, how I can make it better, um, could live coding, like it's crazy. And then not only that, we have to do like application security as well too. So it's like we have to do all these different things within interviews and we don't really have like a one place resource where we can go in and actually study for this stuff. We just randomly are studying for stuff, not realizing what we're exactly studying for. We just studying this information for the hopes that we'll be asked about this. And I feel like that's definitely um, an extremely hard thing to prepare for when you're dealing with um, security engineer interviews. More so as a security analyst, you don't have those problems, but you know, once you kind of start going up the tiers and going to security engineer, you definitely have those problems. And the next thing that people never talk about, and this is the most important one, the amount of time that you spend interviewing. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> like interviewing for big tech companies, you go through maybe six, seven rounds of interview. You have the recruiter screening. This is basically the recruiter saying, hey, okay, well, you're real. You have some concepts or security fundamentals. You know, tell me about yourself. That's basically it. Typically, you will all, if you have any type of basic understanding of security fundamentals as a security engineer, you're gonna always pass your uh, recruiter screening. The next up, you're probably gonna have, um, depending on who you're interviewing for and what position you're interviewing for, you're probably gonna have a coding test or live coding or whatever it is. Or you may just talk with a hiring manager. You talk with the hiring manager, it's basically just kind of go over your experience, like, hey, how's it going? You know, kind of tell me about your experience, what, what technologies have you worked with. You know, just pretty much a, a step up from what the recruiter screening was about. And then after that, you have what is called loop interviews. And this typically consists of five, six interviewers. And this time, it typically takes about five, six hours to complete. And the interview process for that by itself is extremely draining. You're basically interviewing people one by one straight after another for about an hour. So you're interviewing for like five hours straight. And don't, not to mention, kind of going back to my last point, the time it takes for you to interview this stuff. Like you don't really know what you're about to interview for. You're having, you just, you just pretty much studying everything that you feel like they're gonna ask you. And sometimes I don't even ask you. So imagine having five, six, seven interviews lined up and you doing this throughout the week. That means you're spending about 35, 40 hours a week on interviewing alone, not to mention what it takes to actually study for this stuff. So um, I'd like, you know, overall, like whenever you are trying to make a career transition, actually you figure out what it is, you know, not only to get into the industry, but what does it mean to succeed in this industry as well too. But don't get me wrong. I love the money in this industry. I would never try, like, I feel like I would never leave the industry because I love it. Um, if anything, I make a tr may make a transition into maybe like a cloud detection engineer or maybe a block blockchain security engineer. But besides that, man, I feel like the tech industry is great for everyone. Like I said previously in the video, I feel like there's something to do for everyone, no matter what skill set you have or what are you trying to do. There's something for there you do. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys for staying to the end. You know, like, comment, subscribe. Probably should say at the beginning of the video. But yeah, um, I plan on getting on here a little bit more. I'm not gonna say, hey guys, I'm gonna be doing this many videos and so I'm consistently able to do it. But I definitely will try to upload as many videos as possible more often now. But thanks for tuning in. Peace.